somebody uh, hold up uh, their hands to indicate a size, please, <laughs> of something? Uh, right there. That. Okay. The scene is based on that. Okay. <laughs> Who's in here? Who is it? <laughs> Improvisation, the art of living in the moment. Very few people do it better than Three For All. Stephen Kieran, Rafe Chase, and Tim Orr perform without a script on a stage with no rules. Hey, nice place. Thank you. You been here long? Oh, not too long. It's 40 freaking years. <laughs> They came together as friends and, and a lot of respect for each other in the community. And then it just made sense to see them together. They're so good. You know, each one of them has something great that they do. And what about this over here? Some kind of macrame or something? Mm-hmm. That is a macrame of Sacagawea. <laughs> you have to stand back from it a little. No. There's something about when the three of us are together that I feel that slows me down to a place where the stories can come, they, they, they show up, you know, they, they, we can let the game come to us in a sense. And, and I haven't felt it just this way ever before. What is it? What, Mama? His name was Carl. She tried to get it out. His name but something was, was keeping Carl. her from saying it. Carl. Sounded like Carlo, Carl, something, and then, and then she was gone. At its finest, improvisation, when it's working, makes me believe in telepathy. Um, it's not just a matter of getting familiar with each other's styles and shticks and routines, but there's actually a moment when all of you leap into a void and land on a meteor that just happened to be coming by. And that feeling of mutual trust is, it's magic. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, you're right, you're right, Mary, that door is pretty bad. You can't drift away. I mean, you can, but you'll, you're gonna pay. <laughs> right, that's for sure. Names are a hard thing to remember in the process. in heaven. So there's Very hard 20, 25, 30 names during the course of a show. Occasionally. And so. the mistakes, of course, are, you know, enormous gifts at the same time. I mean, when we screw up a name or something, you know, seeing, seeing us get out of the hole we just dug for ourselves is just as much fun, I think. So. I, tall tree, you, squatting bull, and you. <laughs> Do you not remember my name? It is up to you, you have given to speak me... your own name. You have forbidden us to speak your name. <laughs> I, heard that, I heard that meaty part of the head. Even though there are no scripts to memorize, the members of Three For All take time off from their other jobs to reconnect and prepare for their upcoming performances. I bagged groceries. I've scooped ice cream. Worked for about three frightening months at Saks Fifth Avenue. I stocked shelves. I run delivery trucks. Shelved books in a library. I swept up wood shavings at an animatronic, uh, these guys that made animatronic things for like holiday displays of the little carolers. Primarily, I make money from teaching, teaching improv. I th knock on wood. <clears throat> I'm able to make my living as a, as a performer right now, so uh, I'm the male voice for The Sims that, that game, and we created like, I mean, the improvised gibberish it. language. In addition to being a professional actor, Tim earns part of his living coaching one of the best wheelchair basketball teams in the country. Improvising helps with coaching because you have to be flexible and also you have to be um, decisive, which helps with coaching. But I think, interestingly, over the last 10 years since I teach improv too, I've learned a lot from coaching about doing improv, about the amount of effort it takes and commitment and the teamwork and all that kind of stuff. Oh! <laughs> Should we work on things while we're working on freestyle or just use it to warm up? Uh, let's just use it to warm up. Okay. Well, this is a four-star hotel. Oh, it's very nice. Very nice. Let me open the curtains for you. 
Lovely view. Yes. There's the forest off to the right, and down here to the left is a little lagoon. You're welcome to swim in it if you like. Well, thank you. And if I would want a prostitute, what would I do? <laughs> Just yell into the forest. I'll do that. The woods are filled with prostitutes. <laughs> Prostitute nips, I imagine. <laughs> well, you imagine correctly. We're all perpetual students of, of improv. So trying to get better, to improve the craft, to be a better actor, to go deeper into characterizations, to be more committed, to do those sorts of things, work on those, it, 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 it makes everything new every time you perform. To tell you. Cops aren't supposed to lose that much weight. You know that. I know. I don't think any of us think that we own improv or have mastered improv and, I mean, in any way. If anything, it, it humbles you over time. All right. There we go. I'll grab one. In the end, rehearsing can only take them so far. The very nature of improv is not knowing what comes next. We have flyers and reservations and people coming to our show in a few days, and we have nothing planned. <laughs> I mean, it's just really, every so often, it'll really get you like, we have nothing, nothing really in mind. Some lips on. Hey. Is that too heavy? What is it? <coughs> no. Uh, eyeliner? No. Uh, no. Uh, no. Uh, no. You're not, right. not if you do a Liz Taylor and Cleopatra. <laughs> One thing we do is, uh, about five minutes before the show, is get into a room and, and look at each other in the eyes um, and try to connect and remember that we're going to be on stage together so that the outside distractions, whatever they are, uh, fade away a little bit. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, All right, thank you, Vincent. so <laughs> You know, when you hit the stage, a lot of adrenaline shoots into your body, and it might be scary for the first few moments. Then after that, you kind of settle in and you start to tell the story. Now I have a single word to get us started. Psycho babble. Psycho babble. Thank you. So, Mr. and Mrs. Foster, I think the problem with your relationship is that your inability to really get inside... It's a combination of uh, loving to pretend that you're somebody else um, and also giving something. It's giving something to the audience. She's actually my... She's my great aunt. Well, all right, I'll behave myself. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Mary. Mary, Mary, all right. Who the f is it? <laughs> it's me, Aunt Mary. Oh, all right. Damn mother is <laughs> coming around. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I don't know half the f people who. Oh, hi, honey. Hi, Aunt Mary. Who the hell is that? This is Tony. Hey, Mary, how do you do? I'm all right, I guess. Come in. I got you. Cold, sue me, from Get in here. All right, you're not opening the door, Mary. Uh, hey. Right. The more you do these things, the more you relax with it eventually. Or at least you get to a point where you're scared, but you're used to being scared. It's That's manageable. Sort of the, yeah, it's like oh, fear again, incredible fear. <laughs> oh, yeah, that. I thing. recognize okay. that. Yeah. yeah. That's the most exciting thing about this, in some ways, is that. It takes everything you know and everything you've ever learned and everything your brain can do to do what we're doing in the moment. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what's so exciting.